Well, Goldman Sachs has come out with their Asia-Pacific Outlook Report for the year 2018, and I have with me Andrew Tilton, uh, the Chief Asia Economist, to discuss more about the outlook for the region in the coming year. Andrew, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks very much for taking out the time. Uh, let's begin with how bullish uh, Goldman Sachs is uh, in the coming year uh, for the region. Uh, you've revised growth higher, and you believe that the growth momentum that we've seen in 2017 is likely to continue? Yes, uh, globally and in India we, uh, and, and in Asia writ large, we expect to see a solid year ahead. We have pretty easy global financial conditions. Fiscal policies in a lot of developed markets have gone from being very restricted from growth a few years ago to, to neutral to positive now. And we think investment can pick up in a number of places. So we're pretty optimistic about the growth outlook broadly and in Asia for 2018. Will that mean uh, a rally in uh, equities across the region as well? Uh, you know, is that likely to fuel a rally in equities? Our equity strategists believe that we can see a double-digit gain in the broader Asia equity indexes in 2018. Uh, earnings are continuing to move higher. And along with solid economic growth, we think that we, we have a positive outlook for equities as well. We also don't see quite as high equity valuations in Asia as we do, for example, in the U.S., yeah. But, you know, a large part of your report was predicated on the fact that the investment cycle is going to pick up. You're going to see capacity utilization go up uh, within the region. Now, my question is the markets have always typically been ahead of the curve, right? So the rally that we've seen in 2017, uh, what makes you believe that that rally can continue when actually the numbers start pouring in uh, in terms of growth, in terms of productivity? Uh, isn't that the time when the market actually gets into consolidation? Well, I think the worries for markets are either on the growth side if growth should disappoint perhaps because Chinese investment growth has been quite strong over the past year and might, might decelerate. Or alternatively, if inflation picks up and central banks have to slow down the recovery in order to avoid too high a rate of inflation, I think those are the, those are the risks on each side that could be less friendly from a market's perspective. How big is uh, China um, as a risk factor in 2018? Because, you know, they're rebalancing the economy. I know they're trying to come down heavily on controlling uh, the credit problem in the region. Um, and, you know, we've had the rating agencies in the past also sound out caution. I mean, S&P downgraded their overall credit a few months back. Um, so what's, what's the risk factor like in China? Well, I'd emphasize our base case is pretty benign in China. We have the economy growing around 6.5% in 2018, just a touch slower than what we're likely to see this year. This year is likely to be 68 uh, So still very strong growth in China, which is a key driver of investment for the world. Mm -hmm. I think it's clear following the 19th Party Congress that the emphasis of policy is shifting a little bit away from the speed of growth and a bit more towards the quality of growth, the sustainability of growth. I think that's, that's widely understood. The question is how quickly is that shift going to occur? Are policymakers going to tighten dramatically in 2018 in an effort to, to boost the performance in some of these other areas? Or are they going to spread this out as a gradual adjustment over the next few years? Mm -hmm. We think it will be gradual. There will be a slight deceleration in growth mm -hmm. and improvement in terms of efforts on the environmental side and ongoing efforts to control things like shadow banking risks. Mm -hmm. But we don't think we'll see a dramatic shift in 2018. And that would also be a better backdrop for Asia if, if the shift is gradual. As long as China is stable. Essentially. Yes, yes. Okay, what about India's uh, performance uh, into the coming year? You're very bullish about uh, the growth prospects here. Yeah, I think India's had a couple of uh, factors slowing growth over the past year. We've had the shocks from demonetization and uh, adjustment to the new GST system. Uh, at the same time, we've had a lingering issue with respect to non-performing loans provisioning in the banking sector, which has arguably affected credit availability to some extent. I think in 2018, we can see some improvement on those fronts. The shocks of the past year, the impact of those should fade a bit. And if we can see a proactive resolution of the NPL situation and, and capital injection, we think that can be helpful uh, later in the year and in 2019 in terms of the growth outlook. Of course, you know, how quickly and eff effectively that's implemented will be very important. So you think a large part of uh, India's uh, profile in terms of growth picking up would be uh, predicated on the fact uh, on how uh, the recapitalization of banks uh, is implemented? I, th I think that's an important factor, both in terms of recognizing the existing uh, NPLs, non-performing loans, 
but also importantly in terms of providing the capital needed to grow the loan book going forward, particularly at the at the public sector. In your conversations with clients, do you get a sense that this upgrade uh, from Moody's uh, for India's credit profile uh, will evince more interest, uh, especially coming into the corporate debt market in India, especially for meeting the financing needs of a lot of companies in the infrastructure, construction, engineering, uh, you know, the capital intensive businesses? Well, I think, you know, broadly, India is clearly on everyone's radar screen and is very much a, a focus of, of global investors. So I think that the bigger drivers, in, in our view, of the 2018 outlook and of interest rates in 2018 would be, would be the growth and inflation outlook. And I should, I should add, we expect both of those things to move higher, both growth and inflation in, in the coming year. And so how would that set in with, uh, you, you know, your own understanding of uh, uh, the outlook on rates? Because if growth goes up, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, if, ra- if inflation also picks up, then, you know, you'll have the central banks across the region take note of that and perhaps move on policy tightening. I think that we've been in a very friendly environment for, for markets because we've had strong growth. I mean, maybe not so much in India, but broadly, globally over the past year or so and yet low inflation, which has allowed central banks to maintain very dovish policies for the most part, the Fed being a notable exception, which has started to to raise rates. I think one difference in 2018 will be that inflation will start to move higher, generally from a low level, so it's not too worrying in the short term. But as inflation moves higher alongside pretty solid growth, we do think a lot of central banks are going to need to begin normalizing interest rates, and that includes most of the central banks in Asia. Yeah, including the RBI. Including the RBI. <laughs> which is safe, How many safe. rate hikes, Andrew? <laughs> so we have two rate hikes in our forecast late in the year, in, in 2018, yeah. from the RBI, which I think it's safe to say is not a consensus view. Yeah. Uh, that reflects really three things. First, as I mentioned, we think growth will do better in the year ahead. Second, seven so percent plus. So we think growth can can come close to eight for the calendar year. Okay. Uh, so in addition, inflation we think will move a bit higher. Uh, the one factor I haven't mentioned previously is food inflation, where we yeah. think food inflation has been quite low in 2017, mm-hmm. partly for supply side reasons, partly for favorable weather conditions, other exactly. factors. Yeah. While we don't expect a spike in food inflation next year, we do think on the margin it will be somewhat higher. Uh, when you say we, higher, because the RBS comfort zone is 4% plus or minus 2, right? So right, right. More than 6%? So, well, food inflation has kept the overall rate of inflation below 4%, so below the midpoint of that RBI target zone. Yeah. And we think in 2018, it yeah. will remain within the target zone, but be in the upper part. So more like 5 or even a little above 5% okay. uh, later in the year. So I think that's a really important difference we expect in 2018 versus 2017. Lastly, we would just note that you know the global rate backdrop should be moving higher. Uh, so that's another reason to think on the margin policy could be tightening, not in the next several months, but as we get into the latter half of 2018. Would this be a stronger case in the second half? Okay, so you're saying yes, the second yes. half of uh, yes. uh, 2018. It just still seems a little bit um, of a stretch uh, given uh, the kind of uh, commentary that we've heard from the RBI thus far. So mm-hmm. most of the market is uh, penciling in a pause, maybe an extended pause uh, from the central bank. But, mm-hmm. you know, that just brings me to my next question, which is uh, what's, go- what's going to happen with the Fed? Uh, one rate hike perhaps now in December, uh, and then then they're going to lay out the plan for the coming year. Uh, what do you expect? We think the Fed will keep raising rates uh, once a quarter. Uh, arguably, the Fed's been tightening once a quarter for the past year already. Mm-hmm. If you count its announcement of the balance sheet reduction yeah. as a tightening, exactly. it's been tightening four quarters in a row. So the default path, we think, is to continue to do that. Okay. And we think a rate hike in December is extremely likely and further rate hikes in 2018 are more likely than not because growth is above trend, above the long-term potential growth, inflation is moving higher, and yet rates are still very low from a long-term perspective.